Hello, grade eight. So this week we are starting with a new chapter, chapter six, electromagnetic waves. What are the electromagnetic waves? Well, the heat from a burning fire, the light from the sun, the x-rays used by your doctor, as well as the energy used to cook food in the microwave are all forms of electromagnetic waves. So these are the objectives that we're going to cover during this week's lecture. I know that they look a lot, but they are actually not. Starting with the definition of electromagnetic waves. First, let's look at the name of it. Electro magnetic which means a part of it is electric another part is magnetic and if you take a look at this you would see that you have two waves one in blue and one in red and both of these waves are transverse okay and uh, yeah so this is how an electromagnetic wave uh, look like now as for the definition you guys remember in the case of a mechanical wave because uh, yeah just before i move on we have two types of waves the mechanical waves which we already talked about and uh which includes uh, sound waves uh, seismic waves uh, uh, water waves all that and now we have the electro uh, magnetic waves okay guys so this is the other waves yeah so uh you remember in the mechanical waves when we said that water waves they happen due to the perturbation or disturbance that happens in the medium in water so if you have water and you simply put your hand and move it then you will create a wave same thing here an electromagnetic wave is caused by an electric perturbation all right, so now it is electric perturbation, some movement in some electrons. All right, it causes some electricity and this in return will, you know, uh, create an electromagnetic wave. So in any medium without the transport of matter. And if you want to take a look at how it actually moves, it moves like this. So you guys remember the bull jar experiment where we put a speaker, it was a simulation, we put a speaker inside the box and then we removed all the air out of the box and then you guys weren't able to hear anything and we concluded that sound doesn't uh, travel or doesn't propagate in vacuum. Now we're going to do the same experiment but instead of putting a speaker, uh, we're going to put a light bulb or um, any uh, object actually that emits light okay and we're gonna close it with a transparent box and we're gonna take out all the uh, all the air out of it so I'm gonna have a pure vacuum here okay and after the experiment is done you guys will still be able to see the light because the box or uh, the jar is transparent so light is a part of the electromagnetic spectrum and light can travel through vacuum so this is what is so special about these waves so electromagnetic waves can transfer energy through matter okay uh, it could be maybe a solid, a liquid, or a gas, or across empty space, which is vacuum, okay? Unlike mechanical waves, the speed of propagation of electromagnetic waves varies from one medium to another. Of course, same as mechanical waves in this case, because it, it is different from one medium to another, but it is the fastest you guys remember mechanical waves uh you remember sound waves where we said that sound that travels the fastest because it it uh you know the vibrations and the energy can get transferred 
faster through solids, right? In this case, it uh, travels the fastest in vacuum. So all electromagnetic waves travel at the speed of light, which we call C, it's the speed of light, three times 10 power eight meter per second, which is faster than any other medium. Okay. Now, before I move on to the electromagnetic spectrum and we get to know all the electromagnetic waves, I just want to remind you of this formula, which is important, and we're going to use it. Okay, so we know that uh, speed equals distance over time, but we have another formula where the speed equals to the wavelength over the period. Okay, so we have these. And a little note before we move forward is that the wavelength of an electromagnetic wave, it depends on the medium of its propagation. So if the medium changes, the wavelength will change. Whereas the frequency, it is constant and independent of the medium. So it doesn't change. So if the frequency is constant and independent of the medium, then the period, which is one over frequency, it's going to be constant and independent of the medium. Okay. These, you can take these as a note, and of course, we're going to have exercises that include these information. And now comes the famous electromagnetic spectrum. Okay, so it is a wide spectrum that includes all the electromagnetic waves. I'm going to start from the left. We have the radio waves, okay, and you can see that it has the biggest wavelength because as you move forward the wavelength you know it decreases until it becomes really small okay so yeah radio waves they are used in radio stations uh, uh televisions uh, radars and satellites okay so these uh, they send radio waves and of course you cannot see them all right and yeah this is why you can listen to music in your car using your radio now next comes the microwaves from the name of it it is used in microwave ovens and it actually is also used in telecommunication uh, devices so yeah these are the microwaves um then next comes the infrared waves the infrared waves they are you know this warm sensation that you get from a burning fire or even from the sun okay when you're out this warm sensation you get is from the infrared waves okay so these waves okay they are not the red orangey color that you see in a fire no this is light what you sense the heat that you sense is actually cannot be seen okay so it's invisible so we cannot see it and then comes the visible light which is what we can see from all of this big spectrum, we can only see this small part. See, so most of, you know, most of the electroma electromagnetic waves around us is invisible for us. Our eyes cannot see beyond this visible light. And then we have the ultraviolet waves. The ultraviolet, usually it is used to disinfect and sterilize surgical equipment at hospitals. And of course, uh, we get ultraviolet light, ultraviolet waves from the sun. Okay. And it is what causes sunburn. So remember to put on a sunscreen. And then you have the x-rays. From the name of it also, x-rays, it is what is used to detect broken bones. And the final wave is the gamma ray wave, where it is used also in medicine. Uh, but in this case, it is used in treating cancer and also in sterilization. 
So yeah, you guys can see these are the electromagnetic waves. You have seven, okay, and the visible light is just a small part of the spectrum. Now going from left to right, going this way, what do you think guys? Look at the frequency going from here to here. Okay, so the frequency is increasing. The frequency increases going from radio to gamma, right? How about the wavelength? The wavelength, it decreases going from radio to gamma, all right? And we can divide, we can put the visible light in between and we can divide this spectrum into two parts. These are the low energy waves and these are the high energy waves. We're going to see that in the next in the you know next few slides. So yeah, in the next slide then. <laughs> All right, so I said we have low energy waves and high energy waves. Of course, the radio waves, microwaves, infrared, they are low energy and ultra ultraviolet x-rays, gamma rays, they are high energy. Okay, waves. So I'm not going to go through these. Again, you guys can read. These are the uses of these uh, electromagnetic waves. So you can read them. Okay, I'm going to go deeper into the visible spectrum, what we can see. We saw that we can see all the colors and they lie in a small part in this electromagnetic spectrum. Now, um, before the red, we have infrared and after the final color here which is the violet we have the ultraviolet so this is easier for you to remember so yeah the what are the boundaries okay of this visible spectrum so we have it lies between two frequencies 3.75 times 10 power 14 hertz and 7.5 times 10 power 14 hertz so you guys have to memorize this uh, these boundaries because sometimes i would give you a frequency and i would ask is this frequency visible am i be am i able to see this electromagnetic wave and it depends if it lies between 3.75 and 7.5 times 10 power 14 yes then you can see it if not if it lies uh, beyond you know before if it is smaller than 3.75 times 10 power 14 or greater than this one, then no, we cannot see it. Now, if we have the frequency, okay, we talked about the frequency in uh, that the frequency increases and the wavelength decreases, then of course I have also boundaries for the wavelength because they are related. So the boundaries for the wavelength is between 400 nanometer and 800 nanometer okay so these are the boundaries for the frequencies and the boundaries for the wavelength now let's talk more about this so uh we can conclude we can put uh what we said before into words that the visible light waves have frequencies between 3.75 and 7.5 times 10 power 14 hertz also they have wavelengths in vacuum between 400 nanometers and 800 nanometers now how did i find the values for these wavelengths it is simple guys if you have the frequency it means you can find the period right great i have the period now i have the period and in vacuum i know that all electromagnetic waves they travel at the light of speed so i have the at the speed of light so i have the speed i have period i have speed i can find the wavelength okay and this is how how these values came to be but what is nanometer let's get to know how we convert so we have the units of distance, meter. Okay, these units, like they are really small units because we're talking about electromagnetic waves having, you know, small, uh, sometimes the wavelength is really small. So we have meter, millimeter, micrometer, and nanometer. See, nanometer is really far from the meter. So going this way, 
not sure why it shows like this. Okay, so going from left to right, we multiply by 10 power, 10 power 3. And going from right to left, we multiply by 10 power minus 3, or we divide by 1,000. So yeah, this is how we convert. So this is equal to 400, if I want to convert it to meter, times 10 power minus 9 meter. Let's talk more about the visible spectrum. So light, what we can see, the colors we see. Uh, they are actually two types. The first one, you know, is the monochromatic light. And the second one is the polychromatic light. Monochromatic, polychromatic. And from the colors, you can see that the monochromatic light is basically formed of a single color or uh, we can say a single frequency. Okay, such as laser light. So laser light, it could be a green laser, a red laser, but it is formed only of one color, which means that it is formed of a uh, of one frequency. Whereas polychromatic light, it means that it is formed of many colors with many frequencies all combined. And when you combine them, you don't get like something like this, okay? You don't get a rainbow right away. You will get a white light. White light, and we have white light at home. It is the, you know, it is combining all the colors. And how we can prove it? We're gonna prove it in a simulation. All right, so uh, this is, you can see it is a laser beam. And it is red, which means uh, it's pure red. And this means that this is a monochromatic light. Uh, now it's green, monochromatic, blue, monochromatic. All right, so it is a monochromatic light. Now let's switch to white lights. How can I prove uh, that this white light, it includes all the colors of the rainbow? So I'm gonna bring a prism which is a glass prism. It is found in the lab. And what will happen is that when I, uh, let me show you exactly what will happen, but I'm gonna try it with a monochromatic light first. What will happen is that the light, it will bend inside the prism because it is moving from one medium to another. It's gonna behave differently, so it will bend. But since it is formed of one color, which means one frequency and one type of waves, so once it leaves the prism, okay, it will stay the same because uh, it all behaves the same. So it will stay red. But in the case of white light, because it includes all the colors, which means a lot of frequencies, and each frequency, each wavelength will behave differently. Okay, so once you put it, you guys will see that you end up having all the colors of the rainbow on the other side because this white light that you see here it includes as i said so many frequencies and each each one of these waves uh will behave differently it will bend differently okay and once it gets out on the other side you guys will see the light getting uh separated okay into these beautiful colors all right, so what we just saw is called the dispersion of white light, which means it is its decomposition into its different colors. Okay, this is what, what this is what dispersion of white light means. And that is it. We're done with this chapter. I hope you found it interesting. And this is the last chapter for this year. Um, so yeah. I'll see you soon. Take care and bye-bye.